here, Prabhu? Yeah, I'm Prabhu. Hi. Good to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you in this way. Anyway, I just check out your, you have a little studio right over there? Yeah, this is just where I practice. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got some uh, a PA set up. What I do, what I do for practice is I play karaoke Descendants, and I, I just belong to karaoke Descendants. That's what the that's what the big speakers are for. And then I've got all my guitars there that I jam out on. And then behind the door on the right, uh, I've got a little like studio space mm -hmm. that's uh, that's really just suitable for vocals. Uh, you know, you wouldn't ever want to play the drums in there or anything, but you can, <laughs> you can do some direct, some direct guitar and you can do some vocals and that's about all I, you know, want to do anyway. So, yeah. So, do you record your solo stuff in your home? Uh, yeah. So, the, the stuff I've done recently on ukulele, I've done all in this little studio. Ukulele? Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing like, <clears throat> my solo stuff to this, to this, to this point has just been me with a ukulele or variety of ukuleles um, playing uh, songs that that could be descendant songs, but for whatever reason, I decided no, they'd be they'd be better on the uke, mm. or you know, um, maybe I want to put them out quicker, and so <laughs> I might want to play them myself as opposed to you know having the band play it. So oh, it's like to listen to that stuff. I'm really waiting for it. Anyway. Yeah, I think. So yeah, I've got a, there's a Uke album coming out in uh, October. Not an album; it's a it's a single. Ah, and, uh, exactly. yeah, and that's it's called Re Rebuke, and Rebuke. It's, and, yeah, and it's going to be me uh, playing a bunch of ukulele. So yeah, discuss the deep. This is where we discuss the deep cuts. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing, the uncensored and raw yeah. part. So you've never done any interview with. Indonesian press or whatsoever before? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. That's insane. Like yeah, I don't know. Like you guys are really big in here, actually. You know, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but you know, makes me I, makes me want to come. Makes me want to come out there for sure. Yeah, you know, but back in the days, like like ten or fifteen years ago, you guys are not that. You, you guys were not that well recognized, like, I, I guess. But you know, right. like internet came in, and you know, everyone just got into you guys. So so yeah, and some bands like some big bands in here, they always like wear your shirt, descendant shirt on their video clips or like when they play live. So maybe that's the poor like people who started recognizing descendants in here, I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, we've, 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 always, um, we've always appreciated it and been grateful for when people, you know, the other bands, well, mm -hmm. they, they don't even have to name drop. It's like you said, they might, they might wear a shirt of ours mm -hmm. and that's, that's enough because people will look at that and be, get curious, you know, mm -hmm. hey, hey, what's that band all about? I mean, that's, that's been the, our, that's been the story of our band ever since the mid nineties. Right. Because, um, you know, Green Day offspring, they, they were wearing our merch or they, or they would, you know, they would mention this in interviews. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think it's, it's, it's been really, uh, I mean, I have to give them a lot of credit for, for you know, re, re informing people and reinvigorating uh, punk rock, and 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 also just allowing pe allowing people to then discover mm -hmm. to go off on little branches and discover other bands you know that might be you know tangentially related to them. So, so but you just you you got laid off from Dupont. Yeah, that was in 2016. I got laid off yeah, of Dupont. I yeah, just found yeah, out yeah, now. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was I was there for uh, uh, I was there for about fifteen years, um, and uh, I I, mean, I I actually was pretty relieved when it actually happened because mm -hmm. it it was I wasn't really enjoying myself that much there. Wait, and, what? You, you, well, you, I you wasn't in science. I, the thing is, is I mean, the first couple of years I was at Dupont, I was it was a magical place. It was just so many. I was doing so many great experiments and things were going great. It was like very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, but then it's a, it's a corporation and they, mm, yeah, they, yeah. they kind they kind of call the shots. They kind of tell you what to do. And they had, they, they, they kind of refocused me in a different area. They, they put me off of one project and on another project. And that was the beginning of the end for me. I was just kind of like, 
eh, I'm not that interested anymore. I'm not, this isn't really doing it for me. And so when they laid me off, I really, at the time I was playing with the band and I just thought, well, I'll just be a musician then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> may as well, may as well make a career out of it at this point. So that was the so, idea. So how long have you worked in DuPont? I was there for 15 years. Wow. Uh, and uh, before that I was a, you know, kind of a postdoctoral researcher. I had been doing research in biology mm -hmm. ever since 1987. Mm -hmm. So that put, that means, you know, uh, you know, another, another 13 years or no, another 20, 25 or 26 years before that mm -hmm. I was, I was doing research. So it's been, it was a long haul. It's funny. Cause I, to this day, I don't necessarily miss it. I don't <laughs> feel, I don't, I don't feel like I, you know, I'm, I'm like yearning to go back to it or anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, so I'll just kind of roll with the music for a while. Um, right now music's kind of a, in a, bit of a trough because mm -hmm. no, nobody can play shows but I'm just going to ride it out and you know keep going with it when, when we can play again so you know. this point of your life is like it's like the you know the contradiction of I quit I guess yeah 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 it's weird <laughs> I mean it's, it is because I, I you know wrote those lyrics and thought well I'd never be doing this at age 50 mm -hmm. or, or or especially not at age 60 or 50 50 this 50 or 60 just seemed like like on from like out of this world like why like this didn't even seem like like reality it mm -hmm. didn't seem like anything that would actually happen and yet here i am um and i think you know it's funny i just think you whatever you do you you make your own challenges uh and you know that's what to me that's what kind of keeps it interesting is if, if it's challenging so when i got back in the when i when I had to leave my job at DuPont and became a full-time career musician, mm -hmm. that's, that's when I felt like, well, I've got all these new challenges that I wasn't, these, these challenges that I hadn't really embraced before. Like how do you become, or how do you uh, uh, become professional or how do you, how do you uh, make a career out of music and, and, and how do you stay in there for the long haul? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of tried to solve some of those issues and, and uh, you know, and so that's where, now where I'm at with COVID is like the, the new challenge is how do you, how do you uh, persist and come and emerge out the other side of this awful pandemic mm -hmm. and, and still be kind of like ready to rock basically. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's, that's the challenge. And I'm sure that's the challenge that all musicians are facing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about, you know, like the, this path, pathway of job and music, you know, actually, I've I've been there too, you know. Like I played in okay. a band, yeah. I played in a yeah. band right now for like twelve years or so. So back in the days, I I always thought like, uh, maybe I should like, you know, you know, focus on my job instead of music because you know, punk rock doesn't pay the bill whatsoever like that, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, but in the end, you know, like I just need to play music to keep me sane. I guess like that's the easiest part, right? Well, that's exactly what my realization was over the mm -hmm. many, many years. Because for many, many years, that's what it was. Mm, it was it's always like that. Music and science, music and science. Mm -hmm. And I just, every time I would leave music and, and get immersed into the science, there was elements that were very rewarding in that. But there was also elements that were where I felt like I was, I wasn't being allowed to kind of, kind of grow as creatively grow, mm -hmm. you know, or have a, have a creative outlet. And so that's kind of where, that's where I was always coming back to music because I just, I really, I obviously I missed it. Every time I leave, I'd miss it. I'd have to come back to it later and mm -hmm. try to pick it up and, and uh, you know, so I, that's, it's the same kind of thing. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, music is, can be very uh, addictive. It can be very, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it draws you in and it, and it, yeah. it's something, it's something where you can't shake it off sometimes. Once you catch the bug, you can't really shake it off. <laughs> So that's kind of where I am with music too. Yeah. How was your high school time back in the days? I mean, like th this is the this is the funniest part. I think. I mean, like the descendants like pr promote the nerdy look in punk rock. Like it, it's kind of, some kind of like uh, make a geeky look popular. I guess. I mean, like some people think like it's cool to wear glasses, even though you you don't have problem with your eyes if you're not <laughs> you're excited to wear yeah. glasses. So. Yeah. How was your high school time? Like, was you really like a geek back in the days like that? Oh yeah, I was a geek. I was a nerd. Um, and back then it wasn't cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, true. So, <laughs> so, 
you know, it's, it's I, I think I spent the first, I'm thinking two and a half years of high school kind of just trying to lay low and not, and just not kind of like, not, not expose myself to the barbs and arrows of all of my peers. <laughs> and, and so, but, but after a while, I just was like, I, I'm, I, I, why do I care? Why, sh why should I care what someone thinks of me? Why should I care that this person thinks I'm a geek or that I'm, you know, that I'm, I, I'm, I'm a nerd or I'm, I, I, I'm not cool. I'm not cool. <laughs> um, and uh, that's, that's about when I got into punk rock. It kind of, they, they kind of, it kind of coincided, like got into punk rock and realized, you know, Hey, fuck y'all. You know? <laughs> so, uh, and, and that was, that was the best thing for me. And part, part of that, part of me just kind of, kind of embracing that, that side of myself, like just, just saying, be who you are was mm -hmm. me be, saying like, uh, it's a, I'm, I'm going to celebrate that I'm a geek. I'm going to celebrate that I'm a nerd. And that's what I put into the music. The music became this outlet for me just to kind of be like this, you know, spaz or whatever, this kind of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, flailing about on stage. And, and, uh, and, you know, I think in, in the end, I think, uh, that's what I'm most proud of is that, is that, you know, we, we, we didn't play the rock star game of we got to look cool and wear the nice clothes. <laughs> yeah. We just, we just, we wanted to be ourselves. And if ourselves, if being ourselves, man, we were just going to go on stage and just be mm -hmm. these geeks. That's the way it was going to go down. And that, and that to me, that's probably the proudest thing. I'm, the thing I'm most proud of basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, personally, that's the charm of the descendants, I guess, when I discovered you guys, you know, so I feel yeah. like there, there's this band that which the sound resonates to my whole life as, you know, a geek or whatsoever. I, I didn't fit in at school, you know, like, I, didn't, I can't do sports to this day, you know. So, you know, when you're music and I see the image of the descendants, like, this is the band that I'm looking for, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. that's like me, that was like me with Devo, because Devo, you know, yeah, Devo, yeah. They're, they're like the king of the nerds, you know. <laughs> Mark Mother's Ball, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're that's great. Really awesome. <laughs> Video when you did the interview with Rolling Stone, like the first show that you went was Black Flag. Yeah, because I mean I'm counting that as my first. I think uh, prior to that I'd seen like no name band, a couple no name bands at like <laughs> uh, at well at at fest at not at festivals. I'm thinking like you know how like uh, your hometown will throw a like a farmers market. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there'll there'll be some like plinky 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 band there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'm not, I'm not count. You don't count that. You don't count that. But yeah, right. but yeah, the but Black Flag was was the first band where I where I saw them and and they were like an actual you know, uh you know band that was going places basically, um yeah and that was and that was it. Uh, they played this show at this at at this place called Pollywog Park and. Mm -hmm. it, they start. They started like a little mini riot. It was a food. It was really a food fight more than anything else. People throwing food, food at them, <laughs> and them throwing food back at the people. And uh, so that was kind of fun because it was like my first show, and there's this there's this food fight happening <laughs> in the middle of it. It was very. It, was, it had a big impression on me, but I, but I actually was not even uh, aware. I wasn't even uh, that knowledgeable about their music, and it kind of kind of went over my head. I was kind of like, mm -hmm. whoa. Cause I was still listening to Devo at the time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so it took me a while to, to go, Oh, that when I, when I heard black flag for the first time on record, I thought, Oh, I saw those guys. Yeah. Um, and, and so it was, it, t it took a while to sink in. I'm wondering, yeah. Which one do you prefer the, my war, the radio version or like the album version? Oh, there's two versions. There's two versions of my yeah. war. Yeah. My war, the song. You yeah, know, you know that. I mean, I've I've heard obviously I've heard the the album version. Mm -hmm. What what's the other version? There's it's like uh, so Daz was on Focal, if I'm not mistaken, and Chuck Biscuit is still on. Oh, yeah. Have I have I heard that? I'm not sh I'm not sure I've heard that. But you know what? I would always prefer the Daz version. I mean, I not, you know mm -hmm. I got all the respect in the world for Henry, but Daz is my man. Daz is Daz ah. is the. I mean, I just you know, and you know, I think Keith is great. Mm -hmm. They're all the all the singers are great. Keith, Ron, De Keith, Ron, Henry, Chavo. All great, but yeah, Chavo, Ron. Yeah. But I mean, they're but but Dez, he was the one that did it for me. He's just the mm -hmm. one because I think he just he just he brought the lyrics to the most the most aggressive 
place they could be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Keith, Keith was going, Keith was snotty and Ron Chavo was snotty, but Des was just in your face, like, <laughs> sand, you know, sandpaper, you know, just yeah, coughing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I felt like if you were to sing, and if you were to sing in your face, you'd have like lung chunks on yours. <laughs> so, yeah. So he was, the, he was the man for me. I saw the video when you played as a five piece, when Frank and the, uh, Ray were still in the band. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So people threw food at you, right? And then you just ate the food. Oh, is that a video? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. what was the strangest thing that got ever thrown? When you played the stage, <laughs> uh, well, have you ever gotten? Have we ever gotten panties? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I don't. I don't know if we ever gotten panties. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess it was. Pe people sometimes throw up packets of coffee, which is great. Oh. You know, like they throw coffee oh, up. I go, hey, thanks. You know, I can always use more coffee. You know, so I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, you know, that's something that, that I could see people throwing up is, is you know, people have done that with coffee. But, uh, yeah, I, pre I prefer that over beer. Don't throw me a beer. It's going to hit me. <laughs> yeah. do, do you still drink coffee to this day? Yeah, yeah. We still, I still drink. Well, I'm a, I'm a daily addict. Uh -huh. I, I, have, I have to have my few cups in the morning. But when we play, it gets to, it gets to another level. Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to be drinking the same amount of coffee every day that I drink when I play. Mm -hmm. When we play, I'll, I may have like five or six cups of coffee before I go on stage. Um, and that's, that's just because, you know, it's part of our ritual. It's part of, <laughs> it's, it's part of kind of keeping, keeping up with your, with your bandmates because if Bill goes, if Bill goes, Hey, I'm going to go drink 10 espressos. Then you're like, Oh boy, I better, <laughs> I can't, I can't go on stage if he's like that. And I'm like on three espresso, you know, so you, you kind of have to, uh, it's, it's a, it's a bit of a one upmanship where the a one upmanship where, where, you know, if, if Bill drinks a lot of coffee, then I'm mm. going to drink a lot of coffee because you know, he's, he's playing it fast. And if I don't drink enough, I'm not going to be able to play it fast as fast as he's going to play it. Like everyone, everyone's got to have the same caffeine level to, to make it be as tight as possible. Mm -hmm. About coffee, you know, I watch filmage and then Bill explained the coffee recipe back for the descendants back in the days, like 10 spoon of sugar and like, you know, it was like, one. so it was true. Was it true? Yeah, because you have to realize back then you couldn't get your, your Starbucks espresso. It just uh -huh. wasn't, you know, so think about what, you know, like, so he used to go out fishing with his friend, Pat, uh -huh. and now Pat, Pat was kind of a, a druggie. He would, he was, he was taking amphetamines. And Bill's like, okay. uh, you know, so he had the same problem like what I'm talking about with my band, where you got to keep whoever whoever you're with, you got to keep up with what they're doing. Like they were fishing together, mm -hmm. and they so like if you're fishing with someone else, and they're you know, they're like fish, 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 and they're and he's and he's not at the same level, then then I think he he feel kind of like, oh, I'm slowing this guy down. So he felt like, well, I'm not going to do the amphetamines. That's not my bag, but I'm going to drink like coffee, mm -hmm. and he. But, you know, he tries a regular coffee, like a 7-Eleven coffee or whatever. And it's just like, bleh. it doesn't do anything. It's like, it's like brown water. So, um, so uh, he, he says, well, I got to invent something that's, that's going to do me right. Mm -hmm. And that's where he'd make, he invented the bonus cup. That's oh. the, the bonus cup is you fill, you fill a, a mug up like halfway with instant, instant coffee. Mm -hmm. And then you pour, you pour the water in it. And it does make kind of a sludgy, sludgy mud. Yeah, thick. 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 And then you just got to pound that down and, oh. and, and you got to hope that you don't throw up or whatever. And then, and then that worked for him. And that we had, we did that for many years until basically like craft coffee got invented until, until Starbucks came around, mm -hmm. you know, we, I remember playing certain cities where we, this is prior to Starbucks. We'd see, we'd seek out the Italian restaurants in mm -hmm. those towns because you could get an espresso mm -hmm. at the Italian restaurant. That's, that's the only place you could get an espresso back then. And so we, we, we do espressos from the, whatever the Italian restaurant was. And then of course, Starbucks came along and all the other branches of that. And my life's been golden ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony Lombardo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, we, 
uh, it's been a while since I've seen him. I think I probably saw him last when we we re, when we did a we did the entire Milo Goes to College oh, record at, at, Riot at, Fest. At, at Riot Fest. Yeah, that might have yeah. been the last time I saw him. But he's always a he's always a great time to be. It's always a great time to be with him. Um, you know, and and actually we he he and he and Bill and Frank recorded a bunch of early Descendants. Songs. Oh yeah, they write the Wild Seven Inch, right? Yeah, but I mean, after they did that, after they did that, they um, they had um, worked up a bunch of new material, mm -hmm. um, and this is right before I joined. So I I joined, and they by the time I joined, they'd already they'd already put out Ride the Wild, mm -hmm. the Hectic World, and they'd started record they'd started practicing all these new songs, and uh, and I I played I played on some of them. But most of those fell by the wayside. They they didn't make it onto Milo Goes to College. They're just oh. these hit, they're it's this whole this whole batch of songs that that bridge it bridges Ride the Wild with with Fatty P Milo Goes mm -hmm. to College that middle period uh, where they had all these songs. So they finally recorded those in like 2002. So you know maybe almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. but still they recorded those uh, uh, and as the three of them, Frank, Tony, Bill. And Bill said, uh, you know, whenever you want to sit down and, and record the vocals on these, go for it. And so during COVID, I thought, well, this is the time to do it. So uh, I oh, think- Oh, so you were working on that? Yeah, I've been working on that. Wow. And it's about, I think it's about 18 or 19 songs uh, that, like I said, th these are songs that are post, post Ride the Wild, but pre fatty P basically that's uh, rad. Period. they're really interesting songs. I mean, they're, they're just, they, they, they think they exact, they sound exactly like you think they'd sound for being in between that, those two periods. Um, and I don't know why we stopped playing them except that we just started drinking too much coffee. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Once you start drinking, too much coffee, you know, that's how you end up with a fatty P right. I mean, yeah. we go from, you go from ride the wild, to the fatty pee, what's the difference? I mean, it's basically just <laughs> a ton of caffeine, basically. So that's that's why these songs probably got phased out. But mm -hmm. some of them are really, really good songs. I mean, most of them are they're, well, they're all songs that Frank and Tony wrote, basically. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a, so we're looking to put that on like an album of Frank Tony songs from mm -hmm. 1978, 1979, basically. Yeah. My favorite part of the village uh, stuff is like is the Tony segment, you know. Yeah, because he's he's just a he's a character. He's a, yeah. <laughs> he's just he's so funny. I mean, when I look at that when I look at that that move that movie, the the, the scene stealers are Bill and Tony. Yeah, Bill, true. Bill steals the scenes where because he's so funny. Yeah, he, but he but he also had all this whole story with his dad and everything. Mm -hmm. So he brought in the pathos. He had the pathos in the comedy, and actually Tony did too because Tony's Tony brought the comedy, but his, Tony's pathos were the scenes where he's like, uh, I don't know why I didn't stick with these guys. You know, <laughs> the, the regret, he had the regret. And he, I think that regret comes through in filmage as well. So yeah, those two really, you know, they were the, they were the ones that saved that movie for me, for sure. So were they always like that back in the days? Like, you know, the, the humor part, I mean, could you handle yeah, their mean, humor, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, Tony, I mean, he's so, um, he's just so, uh, uh, kind of upfront with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if he, if he has something to say, that's maybe then like, that's going to, that's denigrating to you. That's kind of like, Hey, nice shirt, you know, or whatever he'll say it, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, and uh, you know, so he's very, he's very direct is the, is the word I'm thinking of. And, uh, and so I think that when I saw him back in the, at the riot fest, when we played my college, it's, it's like same old Tony, you know, he had mm -hmm. some comment to say about, some funny comment to say about, you know, I don't know, my shoes or my shirt or whatever. <laughs> um, but he, you know, he's, he's such a smart guy too. I mean, mm -hmm. and he's had such an interesting life. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he, uh, he was a character. He was just, you know, he and Bill together, just, man, they, they just uh, brought so much personality to the band. Mm -hmm. Do you still try for all? <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. I think the thing is, is it's it's like I said, uh, it you challenge yourself, and part of challenging yourself is discovering new things to 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 achieve all in new things in which to achieve all. Mm -hmm. So you know, like I said, I'm playing ukulele a lot, 
I'm, I'm, I'm recording, recording ukulele, uh, songs and ukulele. And, uh, you know, I just try to go for all that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, you know, it's part of all is just really just trying to kind of not stagnate. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, during these COVID times, it's so easy to stagnate. I'm trying my best to not stagnate. Mm -hmm. Um, every, every, all, we all have so much kind of like time to kind of sit and stare at the walls. And I feel like I don't want to just sit and stare at the walls. I want to create, create stuff. Did you write the all logistics with Bill together or like it, it, it was just he? Well, I think he came up with most of them, but we all like, I contributed a few. I can't even remember which ones I contributed, but, but he, he, it was kind of his concept, you know, mm -hmm. that, that we would, uh, that we would have this like, uh, this kind of like, you know, Moses on the mountaintop kind of a thing, <laughs> you know, you know, and, and I, I just, I tried, I tried to give it my, I tried to give it my best, uh, kind of a preacher. My, I had to give it the preacher treatment as best I could. Um, but yeah, I think he, he, he probably that song is about, you know, 90% him mm -hmm. just cause he really, you know, the, the, the concept of all was something that, um, I talked about Pat, uh, him and Pat and going fishing. And that was where the all thing came from. Cause they, they'd be like fishing and filling. They, what they do is they fill, they, they'd fish, with these big nets and they take the nets and, and they dump, they, they put the net in the water and they just scoop out a bunch of fish and then dump them on the deck of the boat. Mm -hmm. And they just kept, you just fill up, you'd fill up the boat with fish and to the point where the, you know, the boat's starting to sink down in the water and it's getting, and pretty soon the fish are, the fish are, you know, almost overflowing over the side mm -hmm. and you can't really put any more fish in if you, your boat's going to sink. And Bill would be like, uh, I think we should stop, Pat. And he's like, no, all, oh, all. Oh. <laughs> like, I want all the fish. So that was where all came from. You know, it's like, all. Oh. And so, uh, of course, he was on amphetamines at the time. But, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so th th that's kind of where all started. I think, I just think he felt like, uh, this is a cool concept, you know, and let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. We, we, we're all very, obviously, it's, we don't have any problem making fun of, of religion. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a religion, but it's our own, it's our own kind of religion. And yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's cool. It's, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's fun. It's a fun thing to do. You always perform some all songs, uh, you like squeeze one all songs to your set back in the days, you know? So was there any like, and you release that there's an all song, but you singing in it. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, we've done some of that cross pollination, uh, uh, stuff when we recorded, uh, we recorded everything sucks. I did a, I did one of Chad's songs, mm -hmm. um, silence, silence. I believe I sang on, I sang a version of silence and, uh, and yeah, so, there's been songs like that where, um, where uh, we'll do Descendants versions of it. Well, in fact, I mean, everyone's maybe aware that, that Everything Sucks, many of the songs and Everything Sucks were originally all songs, right? I mean, yeah, true. <laughs> they, they, were, they were written for an all record and, and, yeah. and, and, and they said, well, I came, I came in with some songs of my own and said, hey, you guys, what do you think of these? And they said, these are cool. Do you want to do you want to see what we got? We got these songs that we were gonna do with, with Chad, but let's do them with you. And so we we did. That's how we did. Everything sucks. Um, and then they went back and did all after that. I mean, they did they did we did a Descendants record, then they did an all record after that. So it was all no there were no hurt feelings or anything like that. But but uh, yeah, so we've done a fair amount. Of that. I think uh, I mean there are certain all songs that I'm pretty tailor-made for and then there's others that i can't i can't do like i can't do shreen for the life of me <laughs> what do we do <laughs> yeah it's like i can't do it i sang i actually sang i sang backup i sang backup on the record but when i've tried to sing it as as the lead voice i just like <laughs> so yeah it's but you know, you, sir, yeah your, your version of she's my ex it is really good i guess i mean uh, yeah, that's that's a song, <laughs> boy. You, you know, it's it's hard to mess that one up. It's such a great, 
great yeah. uh, classic song. And it's in the right range. It's kind of in the, a good range for me. Mm -hmm. And so I've definitely enjoyed singing that one. To get that conversation about like, you know, the not my old thing, like Scott, people always like come up to you like, you know, I wish you were still in the descendants. Did you still get that kind of conversation for this thing? Yeah, well, yeah, I think the thing is, is when, when all started out, they immediately became my favorite band. I mean, I was, you know, you know, when they, you know, even with Smalley in there, like they start with Smalley and, and mm -hmm, they, it was such a natural extension of what we were doing. And, you know, they're such great songwriters that of course it's going to become my favorite band. And it, even when they switched singers, you know, it didn't change the matter for me. I, I just loved them all through that whole period. And so when people would come up and say, Oh, you, you know, you should get back together because there's this, you know, all's not, not as good. I go, it, it's, you know, you don't, you don't know what you're saying, man. It's like, it's like a, a people, you know, they, 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 they get locked into who the singer is mm -hmm. or they get locked or they get locked into a particular uh, style. And they, and the thing about all is that they, uh, you know, they were, they were taking a more melodic and almost prog take on what the descendants were doing yeah and, crazy and, yeah it's our riff. yeah <laughs> but i mean we were you know that's it, it's not that it's not that crazy if you also if you realize that the, the last record the all record that we make the descendants descendants all record mm -hmm. had a lot of that prog stuff on there as well mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a that that to me what made why made is why it was a natural extension to to what we were doing um but yeah i think people i you know, it, it, I found it to be frustrating because uh, people would say stuff like that, and I go, "Well, you're just missing, you're just missing the boat about all. You know, you're you're not, you're not grasping what they're trying to do, um, and uh, you know, you it's you sh you, people need to kind of just view it as music, and not and, div and divorce it from some kind of like legacy or some kind of history, past history, mm -hmm. and then that that's because I mean. Basically, you know, the descendants, we, we had the history, we had the legacy, but all had the chops, all had the music, all had the, you know, the great songwriting. Mm -hmm. And I, that's kind of, for me, was, is what really mattered in the end. So, Hoping that you will play Dot, you know, someday. Yeah. <laughs> that's a perfect oh, I can, song. Yeah, I, can do I that. love that song. Yeah, that's a great song. I my favorite song on that record was "Nothing, Nothing" by oh, Carl. Get the nothing makes I you love that. Why. Yeah, yeah, that's about my favorite all song of all time. Mm -hmm. Really, I love that song, and I've done that one live with them. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Well, there was this one gig we that where all was playing in New Jersey, and uh, and Chad had gotten uh, sick and gotten laryngitis, and Bill called and said, "Do you think you just sub in because we don't want to cancel this gig?" <laughs> Uh, and I was living in Wisconsin. So he said, we're going to fly you from Wisconsin out to New Jersey and Whoa. you're going to, and you're going to do an all show. This was like 1990, 1994 or thereabouts, 1994, I'm going to say. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, yeah, it sounds like a, sounds like a, a, a fun time, <laughs> you know? And so I go out there and, uh, and, uh, you know, they say, well, Bill said, well, we're going to do mostly all songs, but we'll throw some of the Descendants songs in there. And I said, cool, you know, I, I that, you know, testimony to how big of a fan I was of all, I knew <laughs> all the stuff. So I, you know, we did, we did, we did nothing. And we did uh, um, some of, some of the, uh, some of the, the, the Smalley era. Mm -hmm. And we, and I, and I did, uh, and I did nothing. And that was, my, and then I did, uh, I did Shreen and that's where I, I realized I didn't want to sing <laughs> Shreen again. So yeah, I, I've, I've had, I've had, moments where we you know i've kind of impersonated an all singer which is kind of fun how's the crowd of that show i mean like they probably like didn't realize like oh my god it's violent I said it's well yeah i guess so I, I i somewhere along the way it got leaked it got leaked out and oh, so I see. so there was there was a there was a bit of a buzz and so i went on stage and and people realized okay that's not the normal all singer that's milo and so that made it fun i mean it was all kind of like a fun time because I was I was kind of like uh, you know coming coming out of the woodwork mm -hmm. a little bit and uh, and you know I think I think everyone really appreciated it obviously so sorry about orgo fart. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. You know, well, I mean, I, yeah. I think so. We, we had the song Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, or I should say, I, I brought the song, I brought the song Enjoy in. Actually, um, Dougie wrote the music. And so uh -huh. he had the music, and uh, I said, oh, I'm going to write this, these, these lyrics about farting over it. <laughs> and they, were like, they were like, okay, yeah, whatever. So that became the song Enjoy. And then when it came time to record it, um, we actually needed some, we wanted to have fart songs on, the, on, on Enjoy. It's a song about farting. So yes, you got to have some fart songs. Um, and um, so... You know, you, we could have we could have like gotten some samples, or we or we could have gone like <laughs> with our mouth or you know whatever. But Bill says no, they have to be real. They have to be real farts, and so um, so oh so that was that was it. We all kind of like said, well, we got to do it. We got to go to the Mexican food place right around the corner. The, the Alfredo's one, no. No, this wasn't Alfredo, was because this was in Venice, Venice, California. Ah, but, it's a little different. Uh, yeah, so, but, the, but I said, I know of a Mexican food place right around the corner, and that's going to be what's going what's gonna to make, make the magic happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so, sure enough, we went to the Mexican food place and let it all percolate inside. <laughs> uh, wait, and, and then uh, the guy that was recording us, the, the recording uh, uh, technician there, uh, Richard... I forget his last name, but his, his name was Richard. Uh, he, he was watching this whole thing happen. Like, wait, wait, wait. So you're going to go eat at the Mexican food place. And then you're going to come back and we're going to sit around and wait for gas to emerge. And we say, yeah, that's what's going to happen. It's the, and then you're, and then I'm going to record you. Yeah. Then you're going to record us. So that's, so we recorded those farts for the enjoy song, but then we had a bunch of extra, farts you know kind of <laughs> kind of bonus they're bonus farts what is like, yeah so really can think of orgo fart is really the bonus farts uh <laughs> that, that that got got put in there as well so that, i think that large part of orgo fart is farts left over from recording enjoy but then i think there's also some stuff in there about that that uh where bill put in uh they had some uh Telephone recording messages, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for message for message recording, where they where they left the, they left the outgoing message, and it was like Doug just being a complete kind of lunatic, <laughs> on, on, yeah. So that was that, um, and they made a song out of it. So yeah. yeah. Did, did you guys ever play it live? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no. And the thing about it is, is you know, we we would play Enjoy Live and. I would, we would always be like, God, this, this needs to have real farts on it. <laughs> but you know, you go on yeah. stage and what are you going to do? You're going to, you can't, you can't just kind of go, you need a bean burrito every day for the rest of your life. You know, like, well, we got to do, we got to yeah. play the song. So you better go eat your bean burrito. <laughs> so it became like farting on command was not really uh, in the cards for us. Yeah. And so what we did instead is we, we had we uh, had Ray, a guitar player at the time. He had a he had a foot pedal that allowed him to trigger trigger a sample, mm -hmm. and so we had farts farts that were sampled sampled farts uh. that he would, and he'd he'd stomp he'd stomp on this on this foot pedal, and it would like <laughs> make. <laughs> so that's the best we could do, you know. It was it was can it was still canned canned <laughs> farting as opposed to live. So you know, but I mean the other thing about it is that it, is it is if you tried to do live farts every night, your mic would not be in good shape. After. <laughs> and, so, and so I think Bill, Bill was also looking out for my best interest. Like, no, mm -hmm. he, like if I have him farted in the mic every night, or if I have him put the mic to someone's ass every night, and farted, <laughs> it's not, not a good thing. He actually took the mic from me once. This is not that long ago, maybe even only five or 10 years ago, mm -hmm. where in the middle of a show, he just said, oh, pass me your mic. And he, I passed him the mic and then he farted on it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and then he immediately looked horrified. Like, what have I done? And after the show, he was like all apologizing to me. I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't have farted into your, in your mic. It's just, you know, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> leaving, leaving a bit of your ass on someone else's mic. So he's <laughs> apologetic about it. But. I'm so, it's such an honor to talk to you, you know? Thank you so much. Great. Well, I'm glad we finally, I've, I finally got to talk to, you know, 
Indonesia. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're the first. So to me, and like, like I said, I hope. <laughs> I, yeah, I hope we can come out there. You know, soon. Um, yeah, I've I've heard that it's a, can be. It's a really wild scene. I've heard it's a really you know for for punk rock. It's really you know pretty. Wild. Uh, yeah, yeah. Have so, you heard about the No Effect story? <laughs> No, but they're actually the, they're actually some of the people who said, "Hey, you guys should go play Indonesia." <laughs> so, so I think it may be related to that. Like they, they must have had such a great time or something, you know? Or you know, yeah. There, there's always this rumor, like you know, punk bands will never come against Indonesia because of Noah Vax, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I think I, I can ask Mike about it. He can tell me all about it. Yeah.